Hey guys, uh, welcome to another video. Uh, my name is Jason and in today's video we're going to be talking about Ian Kershaw's single volume biography of Hitler which was published in the early 2000s and is effectively a uh, abridgment of the two volume biography he wrote of the man uh, which was published during the 90s. This is actually the third time I'm recording this video. <laughs> I've had a few technical difficulties, um, but that's all right. Um, I have a lot of thoughts about this book. It is a 1000 page biography, um, which is becoming a little bit of a trend here on the channel. I do read a lot of long biographies. I quite enjoy them. Um, and this is, this stands up there with the best of them that I've read. Um, so it's definitely one to, if you, if you want to read a good biography and you don't care about who the biography is about, this is, uh, definitely one to put on that list. Um, so Kershaw is just a little bit of a, a background about Kershaw. He was a medievalist, um, in the early stages of his career and he moved to Germany to continue some of that study and ended up just getting interested in how such a thriving modern state in the center of Europe could become the Third Reich. Um, he's published a lot on Nazi Germany. He's published several books, lots of, uh, he's written a lot of essays that have ended up in published works or that he's actually published as um, collected, collected essays. Um, and then kind of his magnum opus was the two volume biography of Hitler. That two volume runs to a thousand pages in each volume. And obviously it's just very long. It's, it's too long really to, uh, sell to consumers, um, put on, a, put on a bookshelf in, in a normal bookstore. Um, so they abridged it published it as one volume. This is obviously the Penguin um, version. So um, even though I hate the Penguin covers and, and spines particularly, um, they are very, very readable. Um, the text is great. The paper's all right. Um, but anyway, I'm getting a little bit off track there. Um, this is the best biography of Hitler you will find on the market today. Uh, and that is really bar none. There are some other biographies of Hitler that are a bit older, um, but this is kind of the most up to date uh, with all the evidence and all the research that has been done. Um, and it really does stick very, very closely to the evidence. And for that reason, the majority of the book, or probably the last half to two thirds of the book, uh, take place during the war because that's when we have the most evidence. Um, and then the first third of the book or so uh, is before that. So Hitler's time in Linz as a child, that is in Austria. Um, Hitler's time in Vienna, where he failed to get into art school and then lived as a vagrant for several years. Um, Hitler's time when he moved eventually to Germany, when he went to fights in the trenches during the First World War and then during his time in the beer halls in Munich. Now that time in the beer halls is very, very interesting because we really see how Hitler becomes the, the leader of the National Socialist German Workers' Party or what would become known as the Nazi Party. Uh, he, ha he finds out that he has this incredible speaking talent and there are a few stories uh, in here about how Hitler might have discovered that he had this talent. Um, but what we do know is that he, he definitely does have this talent for speaking uh, in a style particularly that gets the, those people who attended those Munich beer halls uh, roused up. And that is what turns him into an indispensable member of the Nazi party. He can draw the biggest crowds. Um, he drives the registrations. He drives the donations. He, he, the 
party can't afford to lose him and in fact he does leave the party um, at at least one time and they need him back they have to bring him back because without him they really can't go on and indeed when he goes to prison after the 1923 putsch the party falls apart Um, and so he does become the indispensable member of the party and when he comes out of prison and rebuilds the party, he rebuilds it around himself. Um, and so then we see this highly personalized rule start to develop and how that goes from running a very, very successful political political party um, and then eventually extends into running the entire Germany and how... In some cases that is very successful, but in a lot of cases it's just not. And it eventually obviously drives Germany into the ground. Um, And some of the most interesting parts of the book was the back and forth between him and his military commanders. um, on Particularly on not retreating and surrendering uh, at various points during the war when if they had done so, maybe they would have been able to regroup, get to better positions, more defensible positions, and perhaps had a better outcome in the war. But Hitler was unable to allow that. And even though his generals did question him and in one case try to kill him, von Stauffenberg, Stauffenberg, or what is more commonly known as the Valkyrie plot, Uh, where they tried to blow him up. Uh, They do question him, but they don't feel like they can go against him. And I just think that that was really fascinating. So if you are looking for a biography to read, this is a good one. If you're looking for a biography of Hitler to read, this is probably the only one you should bother picking up. It really, really is excellent. Um, I'd recommend it to anyone. Um, Obviously, it is very, very heavy content. Um, You do deal with the final solution in some detail here. Um, It is not a history of the final solution. It's not a history of Nazi Germany. Um, It's a history of Hitler and what Hitler's involvement in all of these things is. Um, So, yeah, definitely worth a read if you are interested. Um, I really, there's there's not much more I can say about that. Um, So, yeah, pick it up if you want to. Let me know if you've read it down in the comments below or if you have any other recommendations uh, about Nazi Germany or uh, Hitler. I'd love to hear them and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.